Go. Hello. Hello, I'm Rain Chocolate, and I'm here with Elise Randolph. We're going to be commentating the first AT match of AT14. So here we have Exodus against um, Kick, or also known as Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork, and the match has now started as these people are moving. Elise, you want to introduce the Kick team? Oh, hey guys. Um, kick team you'll see in blue, and you can see them start starting to take damage already. Oh my god, a Bantam just went down. Oh my uh, they took a Frigalogy team with two Bargus, or a Bargus Golem, and a double Raven Navy issue um, with only Frigate Logic, so really heavy battleship core. You can see them working really hard to take down the battleships before their uh, before their logic goes down, but they just already lost two Bantams going straight up. Oh, oh my god! So gosh. they have no logic right now, and they're losing <laughs> bombers and everything. So the uh, Exodus team brought Bargas as well, as well as the Typhoon Cyclone, and instead of Logi, they or instead of Frigate Logi, they now have an Augur, so they're obviously a Mar. So, Kick focused on the Bargas and the battleships, but um, Exodus focused on the Frigate Logi, which was probably a good effect, especially with those hyenas and vigils with the target painters, because they applied really, really well to the support team of Kick. Yep, absolutely. We can see both teams are going with, uh, with a lot of, lot of damage here, but as Rain has said, uh, looks like Exodus are doing a little bit more in the damage department. They are killing all the support off without having to do anything, any touching of the battleships. And now they're focusing on Celix or Treaties in, uh, in a Bargast. Uh, meanwhile, their one Bargast that, uh, that they had that was taking damage is just still in shield. Yeah, so the Ar Argur is obviously holding reps on this Bargast while these Raven Navy issues have been trying to focus on the battleships, which probably wasn't a good move on their part, but they don't have any sort of target painters, it looks like, to even apply to these Vigils or to the Kruer and the other support ships. So while, the while they are focusing on the battleship, and it looks like the Purifier, but Purifier is like still repping back into shield, and it doesn't look like they're really going to get anywhere, even though they still have a lot of DPS on the field. Yeah, armor purifiers are the perfect ship for fighting a bunch of battleships. They have a tiny, tiny SIG, and they do like 600 deeps. So these purifiers are doing more damage than these Vargas for like almost no points, and they are impossible for these uh, ships to hit. The Golem does have a bonus target painter, but it is without links or anything, it's not going to be doing nearly enough to get uh, hits on these purifiers. And it is all but over. I mean, look at this. This beautiful team fielded by Exodus. Yeah, it was really one-sided. We're not even down to the last seven minutes. And it looks like the, like they have obviously already run. Getting rid of the support fleet right away was a good move on their part. Because these teams, especially these battleships, can't do much without those support ships. Yeah, we mentioned that they went with a pretty heavy battleship core of double Bargus and Typhoon Fleet issue. But they also have a Vigil, which is great for painting. A hyena, which is great for control, and a crewer, which is also great for control. It's it's got a little bit of everything, and uh, the damage core is just amazing. As we see that first Raven Navy issue go down, and uh, man, Exodus just starting the day off right with a really really one sided dunking over here. Yeah, but even though even though Kick is losing, they did they still go to the losers bracket, so it's not like they're a hundred percent out of the match, completely gone. Yeah, both of these teams are actually incredibly good. Um, would you say that this was more of just a, a rock, paper, scissors screw up by uh, the kick team? Or do you think, I don't know, do you think uh, we gave them a little bit too much credit? I think it might have been rock, paper, scissors because a lot of times, especially these first matches, and even if they're like American time zone where it's super early in the morning, it could really affect their judgment. So maybe they initially thought, oh, let's go for the Bargas. That's an obvious pick. When they didn't realize how easily the Exodus team could apply to their poor little frigate Lodgy. Yeah, and we started off a bit early, so uh, we couldn't really talk about it too much, but the angle that these teams warped in at is actually pretty vital. Um, they warped in, they be both warped into the beacon at about 30, but because they say came from a similar direction, they were actually very close to one another. This allowed the uh, the Exodus team to take down those Vargas, or er, those Bantams, in really short order before they could get going and get moving around. Uh, a lot of the times it's common to see these Bantams to have a 10 MN afterburner, so they're really hard to hit, but that it takes them a while to get going. So they really couldn't get going before the hyena and the vigil got their paint on them. And yeah, they just and, instantly exploded. Yeah, and I'm really surprised because usually dual frigate logic is actually super, super good, especially with the like the AB, like you said with the AB where they can't really get pinned down by the crewers or any other sort of support. And... Oh, and that's it! Oh my goodness, a 100 to nothing stomp starting out of the day. What a beautiful, beautiful job.
All right, and with that, we'll send it back to the studio.